Okay, so recording is in progress. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to OSCC 2023, day one. And I'm Olamu Blow, the CEO of TIT. I want to welcome you once more and thank you so much for honoring our invitation and being here today. So today we're going to have a series of things going on. Um, just sit back, get your pen, your computer, or however means you can take down notes. Because it's gonna be loaded today. And you're going to see what we have for you. Okay, so let's move. If you can hear me, if you can also see my slide, just use the chat box and say yes or one, just to acknowledge that you can see my slide or you can hear me. Okay, I think somebody, yeah, Zoom people. Daniel, I can't see you cannot. Daniel, other people can hear me. I think they can also see my, my screen. So if you cannot, uh, please check it from the end. So that's it. Let's move. So welcome remarks from our special volunteer, Jala Gibson. So Jala, if you are there, you can just unmute yourself and then give us our welcome remarks for today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. And thanks to everybody for joining. Okay, dear participant, we are delighted to extend a warm welcome to you as a participant in our online summer computer concert, OSCC 2023 training program. On behalf of our dedicated team, we commend your enthusiasm and commitment to expanding your knowledge in the exciting field of computer science. Over the course of this program, we aim to provide you with a comprehensive understanding of various concepts and topics that form the backbone of computer science. Whether you are a beginner eager to dive into the world of coding or an experienced professional seeking to enhance your skills, we have designed this program to cater to learners of all levels. Our teams of experienced speakers, industrial experts, and passionate educator has meticulously curated their materials among others to ensure a well-rounded learning experience. By the end of this training program, you will have a solid foundation in the fundamental principle of computer science and be equipped with the, the practical skills necessary to tackle real world challenges. And welcome again, enjoy the program. Okay, okay, thank you so much, our uh, volunteer Jara Gibson for that's welcome, remark. So let's take overview of TIT. I'm going to play this video uh, just for the next few minutes. Dea Innovative Tech, DIT, with the color representation of green, blue, and white. It was founded in 2018. It is our vision to use technologies to transform lives. There are lots of great minds out there, but the opportunities to learn and grow haven't been presented to them. DIT will use technology to provide career guidance, personal development, national transformation, tech events, and much more. DIT is operating on these four pillars, develop, build, connect, and impact. These pillars can be applied to individuals, groups, companies, nations, and society at large. Activities of TIT since its establishment have been 1. Personal development of the founder in terms of higher education and networking with great minds. 2. 
producing educational videos about computer science or tech, networking, windowing, programming, IoTs, web development, etc. These videos are being uploaded to DIT various social media platforms like WeChat, Facebook, YouTube, etc. 3. Organizing special classes or tutorials for individuals among others. 4. Web development projects. 5. Conducting global webinars, which are done during the winter and summer seasons, and many others. The prospect of TIT is to establish a free online learning platform and technical schools throughout Africa and the world. The takeaway for the audience are 1. Exposure to a certain domain, some might be in a state of dilemma too. Career or educational guidance. 3. Hands on from the speakers, practical tips, tools. 4. Connections or networking with like minded people within the industry. 5. Certification. 6. Future partnership. DIT is open to partnership for the betterment of humanity and society. We can only have a minimally criminal free environment, job opportunities, small businesses, entrepreneurship, and a vastly growing economy when the minds of young people are geared toward finding solutions through the use of technology. Where there is a lack of creativity and innovation, the nation and its people are doomed to stagnation and economic hardship. So, join us at TIT as we develop, build, connect and impact. Okay, okay. So that was it. Uh, overview of TIT. Let's move to the next part of this program. Uh, remarks. And just to continue sharing what we can, this program, this is the the fourth edition. We have had three other editions and it has been very successful. So we are looking forward to a successful OICC 2023. The program is bar annual, meaning we have this program twice a year, the winter's edition and the summer's edition. So this is the summer's edition. And there are a lot of things that we covered up. And for the winter's edition, we incorporated a presentation but in this summer edition, there will be no presentation. The requirement from you is to attend uh, all of the five days. You have to attend all of the five days because there will be no group presentation this time. If you are probably an all participant, you will notice that we have had the presentation on the last edition. So this one, all that is required of you is to attend all of the five days to get a certificate. And please try to use your real name if you join. We are giving you the privilege on the platform to do that. If you still don't know how to do it, you can just send a message in the chat box. That I want to change my name to this name. And a volunteer there on the platform will help you to change your name. The reason why is because of the attendance. At the end of the program is when we take attendance, not now. So if you join now and probably you leave, uh, we have had this case many, many times. People will say, oh, I was there, but then they never ended the program. So at the end of the program, everyone will open their camera and then we do a selfie attendance. You open your camera, we just take a screenshot as a picture and that information will be shared in the groups so that you can verify if your name was recorded for that day uh, concerning the attendance. We are having two platforms that this program is being relayed on. There are people joining on Zoom. There are also people on Tencent. So probably in, well, as the program is ongoing, you will hear me talking about Tencent or talking about Zoom. Currently, there are other people on the Tencent platform, uh, roughly about 26 persons on the Tencent platform. So we have two platforms going on. Uh, these are our volunteers for this year's edition and they are all here on different platforms some of them are here on zoom some of them are also on tencent they are here to help you beautiful people they have been very very hard working and in the planning and everything making sure that today is successful uh i've had two of them that volunteer on the last edition the rest of them 
they are all new volunteers for this edition. Uh, the old people or the old volunteers are Nakili and Thomas. Jala Westbro, they join as participants, but then due to their, their seriousness and everything, they were recruited as volunteers. So the next edition, if you want to serve as volunteer, you are also welcome at the message will be sent as well. And let's move on. So on the last edition, we incorporated something for certificate verification on the website. So if you visit TIT website, the URL or the link is below this page. You can see it there. Just visit the website. And if you have attended the last edition, that is the winter's edition, each of the certificate has an ID. So all you have to do is to enter the ID here, and then it's going to bring out your name, uh, the program you join out of the winter's edition or the summer edition or whatever edition of the program, when that program ended and which group you are part of, all of this information about you will be on the website. So if your friends or whosoever say, oh, I attended this program, you just say, okay, let's go and visit the website and, and check your certificate. Because somebody might just go and change the certificate and just put somebody's name or put any ID. But then the way to verify that is by using the website to verify. So you guys, at the end of the at the end of the program, the last day, as effective as we can be. Sorry, somebody from there. So to be a volunteer, I think somebody asked to be a volunteer. You just have to when a message is sent, uh, you have to respond to that message and then we take it up from there. I have a question with you, and then. We we'll see if you are qualified or not. So that's it for the certificate verification process. Today, our guest speaker is here already. Uh, if you are there, can you please unmute yourself and check the sound from your end? Another guest speaker, are you there? So after the guest speaker of today, we'll be moving on to the speaker. We'll be moving on to the speaker uh, uh, for today. So another guest speaker, are you there? You can just unmute yourself if you can hear me. Justin Blamo, please read yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, honorable guest speaker, are you there? Okay, so let's move on. Uh, when the guest speaker joins, then we'll take it up from there. So we have different speakers for this program. We have five different speakers. This is one of the persons that will be speaking. And then this is another speaker. When the time reaches, you will get to understand or get to know them better. Uh, there's another speaker and as well. So the certificates, this is the template of, of the various certificates that we have. You can see this one for the speakers. Uh, this one is for the volunteers. This one is for you, the participant. So on this certificate, you have an ID on it. So you use this ID on a certificate to verify a certificate on TIT website. So that's how we do it. Uh, this is the bureau platforms of TIT. To visit the website, you just visit titnetwork.org and it's gonna take you to the, to the website. You can see here to training, once you click on this drop down, you will see certificate verification. There you can be able to verify a certificate. There is a WhatsApp group because we have people joining from out of China and as such, they do not have WeChat. So the WhatsApp group will be there to accommodate all of the people that are out of China. So you can just take a screenshot of this 
and you can scan it to join the WhatsApp group. The attendance and every other information we have will be sent to this group. And uh, we're not sending probably all of them through the email. So join the WhatsApp group to get hands-on information or up-to-date information. This is the Facebook page. If you are on Facebook, you just basically TIT your needs technologies, and then you have access to the Facebook page. Everything that we do, they are all on the Facebook page. The last edition, all of the recordings, they are all on the Facebook page as well. We also have a YouTube channel. You can visit by tapping at TIT6299. So visit the YouTube channel. All of the videos for the last edition and including this edition will all be uploaded to the YouTube channel and the Facebook page as well. If you are in China or you use the app called WeChat, you can scan this QR code to add me and then I'll add you to the group. It's because the group have already exceeded 200 persons, so you cannot join uh, directly. You have to join by invitation. Or if any of your friends are in the group, they can also add you to the TIT WeChat group. TIT also have a WeChat channel. That channel is, uh, is ongoing verification, official verification. So you can scan this QR code to follow the WeChat channel. I hope that you can just do it now. And then tomorrow I'll give you update on what I tell you to do it now. So you can follow the WeChat channel. There are videos, uh, SR, TIT, this OICC program. I also produce videos that are helpful to you. And then you can learn other things from there. Even the YouTube page, I upload other videos that you can also watch uh, as a person who is so eager to know about computer science or technology. So our speaker for today is this person. He's not a stranger. He has been with us on previous editions. And I'm so grateful for him at all time. Every time you call him, he's willing to be here and willing to share whatever he has. So today we'll be diving into cyber security. And I'm sure that he has something for us. He always demonstrated something. He's not talking uh, just for free or sharing PPTs, but he's also demonstrating something so that you can see how cybersecurity or what actually cybersecurity is. So shortly, he'll be coming on. Another guest speaker, uh, Ms. Jolie, are you there? Oh, yes, I am. Okay, can you just unmute yourself and then uh, you can speak to us. Thereafter, we'll be getting our lecturer for today. Thank you so much. You can go ahead. I'm going to be speaking. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, one second. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I guess I've already been introduced. I uh, my internet was giving some problems, so uh, I didn't I didn't hear that part. <laughs> All right. So I just want to say um, I am glad to be here today, and wherever you are watching from, I am grateful that you are able to attend this event today. And I love my name so much that I'll have to <laughs> re-emphasize it. <laughs> I am Joelle Choco Cohen, and today I am very, very happy, extremely happy to be speaking to you all. It is such an honor to be in front of all of you amazing scholars to share my knowledge with you. I'd like to extend my gratitude to the executive director in person, Mr. Orlando Tia Blow, for choosing me to serve as the guest speaker of today's event. So today I will speak to you about the importance of capacity building, such as this year's online summer computer concept or CC training and the benefits of it. So before I continue, I'd like to first acknowledge all of the scholars that have registered for this year's OSCC. I am amazed by the bold steps you've taken to be a part of a life-changing experience. 
Because nowadays, there are a limited number of young people who voluntarily commit to improving themselves. So if you are a student studying computer science, this is the right opportunity to improve your knowledge and expertise and to build experiences in your career. On the other hand, if you are not a computer majoring student or worker here present, this is still a great opportunity to learn and gain additional knowledge because you never know where life may sell you. You don't know the next direction life is going to take you. So without further delay, I will just go straight into it. My presentation today is not going to be long, so don't worry, <laughs> I'll be quick. <clears throat> now let's get to know what is capacity building. So if you think about capacity building and you search all of the definition of capacity building, it's going to draw you down to one word called improvement, right? So uh, capacity building, I would like to define it as an act of improving oneself, one's organization or community to enhance overall performance and achieve a targeted goal or a mission. Now, let's get to know what is improvement. If I'm speaking too fast, you can just um uh, say in the comment section now, slow down. Yeah, so now let's get to know what is improvement. Improvement is anything that makes something better than what it was before. Or you could also say something that make, uh, anything that makes something better than something else. So if you want to be better than someone else, or if you want to be better than what you already are, you will try to improve yourself. And now how can you improve yourself? Is to build your capacity. So nowadays we are living in a com competitive world where you know in every sector people compete to get to a certain place. It is a place where every day there are new advancements being made and new skills obtained. So OSCC being one of the outstanding computer training summer program given to youth scholars, it is a great chance to improve your skills and to obtain opportunities for the future. And it's also a continuous capacity building stepping stone to achieve great opportunities and privileges for the future. Therefore, if you are building your capacity either in your career path or other works of life and to get more advanced in achieving greater things, you must always, always put yourself first by building your capacity. So now the next part of our, our, our presentation will have to do with you being a sector of NGO or any works of life, right? If you are a leader of an organization or someday in the future, you could be a leader of an organization, you must have diverse knowledge to render to your subordinates. If you want to be a CEO, you cannot allow somebody that isn't a CEO to level up with you. You must always have a diverse mindset, you know, more, know more things than others. You must always be at the top of information in doing, in doing that to continuously build your capacity. Also, if you work in an environment where there are many workers and you need a promotion, you must at least be able to have a distinct attribute to qualify you for that position. Because I mean, you cannot uh, level up with everyone else and have the same like the, the same knowledge on certain issues and expect to be higher than those people. It only takes the grace of God <laughs> to get you there. But educational wise, you must be advanced enough to be able to bear a certain position than your colleague, like your subordinates. So you must be able to improve yourself to where you feel will be tangible in providing support and massive development in that sector you find yourself. Now the question is, <laughs> which area can I improve myself by building my capacity? So I'd like to highlight two aspects. The first one is you have to build your capacity in your desire career related field. Whatever you desire to do in life, make sure you become an expert in it. If you want to be a nurse, <laughs> make sure you're an expert in that. If you want to be a scientist, do it to the best of your ability. If you want to become a computer specialist, make sure you're an expert in it, like Ms. Aulano. <laughs> yeah, so whatever you choose to do, make sure you commit to it with diligence and consistency to leave a great legacy that history can remember you for. 
the more you know, the better you become. And the better you become, the more you'll be in demand to society. And as and as society demands your kind, your limited version, <laughs> because definitely you'll become a limited version. So is your chances to make a legacy, leave a great legacy and achieve great success in your career. So whatever you do, do it with passion and commitment. And secondly, I would like to say, take advantage of every opportunity and build your capacity in other fields that may not even be related to your career path. Somebody may ask, why should I build my capacity in non-career related field? The answer is you never know what's behind the curtains for you. Life is such an unpredictable journey. It sometimes doesn't go the way we plan it. And other times our next opportunity to make us successful may be related to something we didn't even study in school or something we didn't even desire to become. So therefore, it is always important to have an extra knowledge on other related field of study and to get ready to show according to the direction that life will throw you into. Now, let's go to the general and broad perspective of the importance of capacity building. So building your capacity will help facilitate knowledge of transfer. That is acquiring knowledge from individuals like the people you've come today to listen to, learning from them, and adding that knowledge to the ones you already have to improve yourself and to improve your organization and wherever you find yourself someday in the future. And building your capacity today will enhance you, your performance in developing skills, knowledge, and ability to improve your performances and productivity as enhanced personal growth, whatever you may find yourself in every sector. Also, capacity building will boost your personal growth, prepare you for better job opportunity in the future, in increase your self-reliance, improve collaboration, and your career advancement ultimately will lead to a better result or the organization you may find yourself in. So now let's go to capacity building, the importance of capacity building as it relates to computer science, because I know this is a computer training program you are here for. So the importance of capacity building in computer science, such as this year's OSCC 2023, will enhance your knowledge in keeping up with technological advancements. This program will help you equip, equip yourself with the latest knowledge and skills required to work with emerging technologies. Also, this year's OSCC capacity building will help you bridge the digital gap divide by providing training, like all of the training you're about to receive here, and it will give you resources to participate in digital economy that you may use technology effectively and safely and you can navigate the digital world with confidence and make informed decisions. Also, 2023 OSCC will help you become creative and innovative by equipping you with the right skills to learn and brainstorm ideas of fostering into the future by developing solutions to real world problems. You can become a problem, a problem solver after this year's OSCC um, training program. Also, as a computer science skills or a computer science student, computer science is in high demand worldwide in various industries, various sectors. So take advantage of this. This year's 2023 OSCC will grant you the opportunity to be part of the many assets to society by fueling you with knowledge that you had that you didn't have before, or knowledge that you had before to develop it and make it more advanced. And it will also give you a better skills for the job market so that you have a well-paying job and you will provide quality solutions to entities that you may find yourself in the future to work. This year, 2023 OSCC will help you address cybersecurity challenges by serving as professionals in cybersecurity practices and tech, uh, sorry, and technologies so like a te 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 technological sector to protect you, yourself, to protect the people around you, to protect the organization you may find yourself in, and to provide critical infrastructure solutions. Lastly, I would like to say capacity building in computer science is essential, will be essential to you for building a sustainable future by equipping yourself with the skills and development and to implement sustainable technologies and also to address 
environmental challenges and create solutions for the real world. So ladies and gentlemen, great scholars that sign up for this year's OICC, it is not a mistake that you are here. Take full advantage of it to participate in every one of the training and take it very seriously so that at the end of this event, you may not only get the certificate, but you may have knowledge gain. Without further ado, I'd like to thank you for listening to me. And if you have other questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, you are in the chat box for your been following. Just give it up, a thumbs up for the thank you message for our guest speaker for today. We hope that you can, or you have taken something from what she has said. Uh, thank you so much once more, our people on Tencent and our people here on Zoom saying thank you. Thank you, our incoming doctor. Uh, yeah, if any other questions from their end, I will shortly reach out to you. And if the time permits us, then you can be able to respond to them. Uh, but thank you so much as we move on to the next part of this program. Uh, is Nakili is Nakili around? Volunteer Nakili. So guys, if you are just joining us, uh, if you have not followed any of the platforms of TIT, you want to join the WeChat group, just scan this QR code, the WeChat channel, you can scan this code, YouTube, Facebook. Just take a screenshot of this and save it in your phone. And then you can follow right after the program. Nakiri, are you there? Nakiri, if you are speaking, we cannot hear you. So honorable, honorable lecturer and speaker for today, I uh, hope you are ready. Right after Nakiri, you'll be taking over to dive us into the world of cybersecurity today. Nakiri, are you there? Yes, boss, I'm here. Please introduce our speaker for today. And right after, we'll okay. Good morning from my end. Um, our today's speaker, he is a PhD candidate at Puna University. He served as the Civil Service Agency's Assistant Director, Deputy Director of Information Technology Services, and Director of Payments. He has served as the manager of component two for the World Bank Public Sector Modernization Project in Liberia. He is skilled in information systems security, ethical hacking, penetration testing, false testing for software vulnerabilities, et cetera. He will be speaking to us on cybersecurity. You are welcome, sir. Okay, thank you so much, Nakiri. Mr. Women, if you are there, you can uh, take it up by sharing your screen. And, uh, okay, uh, somebody's screen to share. I think the person need to. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've closed that already. So did, you need to disengage to allow me. I'm coming, let me give you that permission. Okay, you can go ahead now. Okay. Are you seeing my stream? Yes, we can see it. Yes, we can see it. Are you seeing my stream? Yes, we can see it. Yes, we can see it. Oh, okay, okay. I think you have already heard uh, about my profile, so no need to go further uh, to just repeat. Uh, I have a BSc, a Master of Engineering, Computer Science and Technology, and currently a PhD scholar at the Hunan University. So not to waste much of our time, we will go straight into our serial business for today. What we will first of all talk about before carrying on a discussion, we have to first of all introduce what cybersecurity is all about. 
in an increasingly interconnected world where technology plays a vital role in every aspect of our lives. Protecting our digital assets and ensuring the safety of our information has become paramount. So in this presentation today, we will explore the importance of cybersecurity, the current threats we face, and some key strategies to enhance our defenses. So sit attentively and learn. Well, the, the first time, the first time we have this, I mean, our second presentation, we talk about the definition. We also explain about the brief history of cybercrime, the motives behind cybercrime that we went on to talk about the roadmap of cybersecurity. But today, I've given you or I brought you new idea, a statistical overview of software development vulnerabilities. Uh, like the the analysis you see in there was extracted from my own publication, from one of my publications. Uh, our discussion today will be about phishing attack. The other day we did, we explained in detail about the different types of phishing attacks, but today we will use phishing uh, as a pretext for for cross site scripting attacks. So uh, we are not going to discuss the entire analysis, but the top one, this is very key. Now it's challenging in the world, improper neutralization, uh, neutralization of input during web page generation. That is cross-site scripting attacks. And I did the analysis. Uh, this was done in Jupyter Notebook. I used the Anaconda uh, library and used Python for this analysis. So, uh, and the data was taken from the global data set, where all of the vulnerabilities in the world, all the researchers for the around the world, uh, information I, I stole. So from this analysis, cross-site scripting attack have been key. So for, for our today, wherever you are, whether in the night, like for in China currently, it's in the night time. If you are somewhere situated in the parts of the world, whether in the afternoon or whatever time you have, this is our outline for discussion today or tonight. What is cybersecurity? The trial, the other day we, we talked about it, but was not in detail as compared to the one you are about to hear. CIA trial model of cybersecurity, the fundamental skill of cybersecurity, then the intangible skills in cybersecurity, the intermediate skill of cybersecurity, because now we have, this is our, our fourth lesson now. So we should, we should step up our game. So seven layers of the OSR model, that those of you from the network background, you will understand what I'm talking about, but this is not about networking. It's, uh, I just want to show you the relationship between networking and cybersecurity. OSR model from the cybersecurity perspective, the social engineering, steps in social engineering, and the phishing attack, and the list go on. So let's continue. So before then, we have to first of all know what cybersecurity is before we continue with our discussion. What is cybersecurity? The word cybersecurity refers to the practices, measures, and technologies used to protect computer systems, networks, and data from unauthorized access, attacks, and damage. So like this definition will be used throughout this presentation. So from, from the discussion point that was listed, we talk about the CIA trial a model of cybersecurity. As you can see, what the C stands for is confidentiality. And this principle focuses on maintaining the privacy, the secrecy of information, ensuring that it is only accessible to authorize, I mean, to authorize individual or entities. So any other information within any organization should be for a specific individual, not any other person. 
So confidentiality aims to prevent unauthorized access or disclosure or exposure of sensitive data. Then we come to integrity. The I in the CIA is integrity. It shows that information remains accurate, complete, and unaltered during storage, transmission, and processing. So the goal of this is to prevent unauthorized or unintentional modification or deletion or addition to, to data. So within any organization, there are, there are some elements within organization that have ulterior motives. So the IT division or whatever division for that matter that are giving responsibility to protect data should have that integrity, should make sure that information should, should not be modified when it transit. Availability, it show that information in the system that process or store, store it at accessible and on, on, I mean, uh, usable by authorized user whenever they, they need it. So there's a principle behind this. It says this principle aims to prevent disruption, the downtime or denial of service caused by intentional attack, technical failures, or natural disasters. Well, this is like a review. From our previous uh, presentation, we talk about the roadmap, but this is not the same roadmap we discussed about previously. It has been modified and categorized into specific uh, segment. So basic computer skills, look at the CompTIA. You know, if you, you have, I know some of you, I receive email, I receive telephone call and messages from other students from the previous teaching that they wanted me to explain today in detail about this roadmap. So CompTIA, let's look at the, the CompTIA A+. A plus. You cannot drive a car without learning about the road. So if you want to be a cybersecurity professional, you have to have some basic knowledge of IT skill. Okay, so the CompTIA, CompTIA will teach you the fundamental knowledge about IT. Some offices around the world today, before they recruit any IT professional, they, they will ask about your foundation because A plus covers everything about even the hardware, software, networking, business networking, as well as, uh, 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 how do you call this, uh, 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 web, web, web development and what have you. Everything is factored within A+. So for networking, I purposely captured those areas that you see in there. This is not a networking class, but I'm giving you the roadmap, what you need to do in order to be successful as a cybersecurity professional or analyst, DACP dynamic host configuration protocol. You need to learn about this protocol, not network trans, uh, uh, translation or address translation, subnetting, IPv4, uh, private and, and uh, a public IP, all these different protocols. You need to learn about them. But in general, you need to learn N+. When you learn N+, all these are factors within there. But the reason why I'm, point, I'm pinpointing them is they are very key to your journey as a cybersecurity professional. We have Linux skills. You have Kali Linux. We also have uh, Ubuntu. You, you can call it Ubuntu, whatever way you call it is okay. Then we, uh, et cetera, because there are other distros, there are other distributions that are in uh, list. But these are key. If you learn one, you learn all because the syntax are more, the syntax are, are the same. Those syntaxes that I mentioned that they are the same. So if you learn one, you will have the idea to move on with the, the rest. Virtualization. Virtualization is very key because you will not always use the host machine to practice hacking or to practice whatever uh, penetration testing you want to do. You have to use you have to use the virtual environment in in terms of damage, then you will be able to to roll back what you have done. So and you cannot 
use the host machine again because the host machine is connected to a network. So you cannot practice within our environment because it will cause problem to, you will be prematurely hacking other, other, other people disturbing it without you knowing what you have done. So you have to also learn about virtualization. We have CompTIA Security Plus. This one will give you the overall idea about what security entails. So now this is also key, this area we have reached. The reason why I brought this is after learning all of what I just listed up there, you have to have that, you have to be creative now to apply because we are going to move to another level of, 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 the, of the journey. You need to have that thinking, uh, you, you need to uh, uh, think creatively or thinking creatively is very key to the process of, of, of cybersecurity. Because now the intangible skills we're talking about, there, there, there's, there's always a way to hack a system and many ways to accomplish it. So a good hacker can think creatively of multiple approaches to the, to the same hack. So as cybersecurity professional, you need to have that problem solving skill. A hacker is always coming up with, with, with I mean, coming up against a seemingly unsolvable problems, requiring the master hacker to be accustomed to, to thinking analytically and solving problems. So as a security professional, you need to think beyond the box. You have to be persistent. Don't give up. Because being a security professional, I don't know whether you will be on the defensive side or the offensive side, in whatever office you will be employed, you, you, you know, as a, a hacker must be persistent. Number one, if you fail at first, try again. If that fails, come up with a new approach and try it again. So because it is, it is, it is only through persistence that you will be able to hack the most secure system. And the hacking I'm talking about, this is not a hacking class that I'm teaching anybody to to learn how to hack uh, secure systems. This is what in the training class that what we do, because before you, you, you fight a criminal, you have to learn about what a criminal is doing. That's why I'm calling it a war hack, but this is not necessarily uh, an act of teaching, to, teaching you to hack. Intermediate skills of cybersecurity. Okay, this intermediate skill, we we going to apply it now, okay? We have a demo, okay? I want to show you after learning all of what I listed up there. Here now, this is the intermediate level. That's the reason why at the at the middle, I say you should be creative now after acquiring that other knowledge. You need to have that problem solving skills and also be persistent. You need to know how to do scripting. Scripting, I will show you just a little about it when we are doing a demo. Script shell, I mean bash shell, you need to learn about it. At least one of the per, uh, programming languages, we have like uh, Python or Ruby, okay? Any of those languages, you, you are not compelled to learn other than the reason why I'm listing them is, is, is they are key, right? They are key to your journey. You are, they are key to, to your journey of becoming a, I mean, a successful. So they are, they are, they are, they are another skill, they are, they are skills that, that, that you need to acquire in order to be successful, okay? Web application. We have web application. The reason why I'm mentioning web application is you cannot be a cybersecurity professional without knowing about uh, the, the, the technology of, web, of, of the web. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Python, Java, Etc. There are many. Then we come to forensic. When you're talking about forensic, you need to know how to cover your track because this is what the hackers are doing. When you are when you are carrying on any practice or when you are doing penetration testing about any uh, unusual happening within a system that you are being employed to you have to learn how to do forensic 
uh, digital forensic and network forensic. You have to know how to cover your track so that the next person or the hacker will not follow. Like, that's the point, Eastern. If you are a network administrator and you have done some configuration within the system, all of your coding that can be tracked, you have to know how to delete that in a system. Cryptography. So if you look at cryptography now, let's look at public, private keys, hashing, symmetric and asymmetric encryption, steganography. So the steganography, all of what we have, what I mentioned here are all about hiding information. Some, you can use a, you can use a graphic or a photo, photograph to, to hide confidential information or within a video. You send a video to somebody, but behind the scene, there are information and there's a way to do that. Okay, now today I know we will have another uh, class called networking, but there's a reason why I'm mentioning this area. They are very important. All of what I've explained up there concerning networking and the various uh, fees that you need to learn in order to be successful in your journey as a cybersecurity professional. They, we have application presentation. This, these are the, the OSR model. All network uh, engineers are aware of this. And the reason why I brought this to you is I have associated them with the, the their protocols. So you need to understand the protocol. Sometimes you will learn about, you will, you might have heard this before concerning application presentation, section, a transport layer, a network, data link, and physical. But do you know their function? Do you know where they fall when it comes to implementation or when you are as a, a cybersecurity professional, where you need to do what or which protocol belongs to what? Are you aware of that? That is the reason why I brought this. For end user layer, you have HTTP, FTP, uh, IRC, and SSH. This will be given. I'm not going to, because we are not teaching networking now. I'm going to give you this so you will know the next step. Where we are going right now will be explained in detail concerning this. But our concern is about the networking side. I mean, the cybersecurity side of what we are discussing. OSR model from cybersecurity perspective, because this class is about cybersecurity, not networking. But I'm just giving you the relationship for you to understand how networking is important when it comes to cybersecurity. OSR layer and attacks. At what layer you can experience a specific attack? So I have listed them along with the, the, the type of attack that existing in each of those layers. First of all, let's look at the, the application layer. When we're talking about application layer, generally includes applications such as browser, word processor, and other applications. So this layer, as it is mentioned here, this layer's most important attack are likely to be exploitation, as you can see. So you see the exploit. Then when you look at the presentation layer, uh, you will see at the presentation layer, the, the most concerning attack is phishing and sending emails to various people with, with, with malicious links. And we're going to do that live tonight. Okay, uh, I, I have a demo for that. So the proof of concept is already prepared to be uh, shown here. And we look at uh, the section layer. Section, what happens at the section layer? At the section layer, the most important attack is hijacking, as you can see there. Hijacking is where an attacker can, you know, take over an existing section and establish legitimate or uh, a section established legitimately by the users. So what 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 they do is they position themselves in between to hijack the section. If you ever heard about cookies, section cookies. At a time, sometimes you go online, you see them, uh, some site will require you to, to, uh, to agree on the, the, the cookie agreement. I mean, you see this site is, is, is uh, recording a cookie and, and what have you, if you try to avoid that, you will not be allowed. Uh, most, most of those sites, 
doing doing DC just to be able to recall your your interaction with their site is is meaning for for uh, Google Analytics is for for them to know all of their users, their clients that that that, that usually visit their site and for what reason they are visiting, and every every segment of the site can be recorded by by that app. So the next level is transport. For for okay, uh, cyber security perspective, let's look at transport layer. The hacker often does what we call reconnaissance at this layer. They they investigate. They try to intrude. They have to take uh they, they the actual explanation of this is in is is at hand. I don't want to give you the detail for here. Then there will be no need for the other slide. So let's move on. At at the the network layers, the the attacker can conduct what we call man in the middle attack. That what you see in there with that M I T M, man in the middle attacks, where they play themselves between a legitimate user and a server, thereby uh, eavesdropping on the on the traffic and possibly even altering it. So they put themselves in between, like as you can see the graphic up there with our red uh, PC. Instead of going through the actual area, they have bypassed and put themselves in between, capturing the information from the 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 the, uh, the, the user and the host in between. Then we have the data link. At the data link layer, the attacker can smooth. So actually, the word smooth there, uh, maybe uh, somebody would like to know the meaning. Okay, they will put themselves in between to uh, like like uh tricking you to you know allowing you or fooling you to do certain things that they want you to do so that they will take over your section. Okay, let's say for instance, the attacker can spoof the MAC addresses. The MAC addresses uh is is a, is is uh from a network perspective, let me just explain that part is globally unique address stamp on every network device and it's essential to to the proper functioning of 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 of, of the land they we call that uh local area network so if you are doing the arp you will you will better understand that if you read what i told you about about m plus arp is 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 address translation protocol so finally you look at the the physical Okay, the physical layer can be the tag using Sniffy. Okay, as you can see there, Sniffy is a practice of watching and analyzing network traffic in between. Okay, so now that you have understood this as aspect of our teaching, now we'll go to social engineering. It's a manipulation technique that exploits human error to gain valid information or access or valuable application that allows public access to people data. So social engineering is just about taking advantage of your own mistake because it is just impossible for a human not to make mistake. So sometimes you guys watch out for your own mistake to, to take over your, your network. Okay, let's say for instance, steps in social engineering. Number one is fingerprinting. Then we have what we call passive reconnaissance. And we have active reconnaissance. So for, for fingerprinting, let's say for instance, if you are trying to, or a hacker is trying to get into anybody's system for that matter, they cannot just attack the system without getting uh, without doing what we call fingerprinting. Fingerprinting is the process of enumerating the following attribute of a target. You have to know the users. How many users on, on that network? The hosts. What are some of the, the, uh, the services connected to, connected to that network? What type of server? 
the server, uh, what 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 services the server, the server is hosting? Is it about PBS or IPBS system for internet? Uh, 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 are you for telephone? What type of network? So you have to know the host, the network topology, the design of the network. Is it mesh topology, topology, or ring topology? Which type of topology? You have to establish that first. Operating system. Are they running Linux or uh, a Windows, Windows Server, or which which type, which type of operating system? Is this is it is it a Windows Server or which which type? The services running on a on a on a network. Are they having some uh, bank banking applications that are running on a particular network that you can hijack to get through? These are some of the idea of hackers. So as cybersecurity professional, you have to learn about all of these things. And the most important part of, of learning cybersecurity is you have to, first of all, reproduce an idea and behave like a hacker first, then before you prevent the art. Before preventing that art, you have to learn what hackers are doing. That's why in every organization, they have what we call the red team. The red team are a group of uh, IT professionals that I both on offensive and defensive side. Some are for prevention and some are for penetration and as well as uh, intrusion and detection. So in the passive reconnaissance as mentioned there, passive reconnaissance is the process of, of, of learning about the target without ever directly interacting with it. That's why you see the airplane, right? You are not there. You, I can sit within China or you can sit anywhere when you are hired as cybersecurity professional. You can do reconnaissance on any system as long as they have a network and in any part of the world. And it will be you will behave as though you are there. There are tools responsible for that. And you can also create yours to do that for you. Then we have uh, active reconnaissance. This is very risky, right? Active reconnaissance. Uh, people will not be so clear with you uh, to just release that information. They said this is this is a piece of information gathered while actively interacting with the system. So if you are doing recon on um, system, this is live system, right? It's like you are within the premise or you are within a particular environment. That's why you see in a car there. Maybe you you are within a particular country because once you are within that country, you are under the domain of that nation. You can be tracked. So it's risky. Sometimes, mostly what hacker can do is they look for leaky wings. Uh, leaky wings, let's say for instance, there are other employees that are not trained, right, within an organization. We're going to do that now, okay? You, they just send fishy email for uh, employees of that, of that type to just click, then they will gain access to that particular system instead of just going there uh, by themselves because it will be caught. Next step after re reconnaissance is exploitation. We have exploitation, post-exploitation and covering tracks. Okay, exploitation involve attempting to use the identified vulnerabilities to gain unauthorized access to the target system. And the goal for this, the goal of the, the exploitation phase is to demonstrate the, the potential impact of a successful attack, such as assessing sensitive data or taking control of the target network. We're going to do that exploitation today through penetration testing. post exploitation post exploitation is what happens after the hack or exploitation. post exploitation can, can be, I mean, or can include grabbing password, assessing the data, I mean, database, turning on uh, or accessing the microphone or, or webcam. Sometimes even the CCTV camera, when you get into the network, when you are already, when the hacker is already within, this is what it do. Sometimes they encrypt after causing damage, they will grab their information and encrypt it and they ask for ransomware. Okay, they ask for money. They will tell you they're going to write you through your network, sending you email after getting 
into your network, telling you that we are a social and so organization, we are taking over your network. They will look at the, the organizational asset when they know that you have a lot of money to charge you. See, if they, this is the only way. And they tell you through maybe crypto system, pay the money, then you gain access to your data. Then they will give you the, the key to the encryption, uh, the, to the data they had, that they have uh, previously encrypted. So covering tracks, this phase makes it more difficult for, for, for a forensic investigator to be able to back or to track the hacker's activity and action. This can mean deleting or altering law files, deleting bash commands, changing timestamps on files and others. So I, I think I, I, uh, I explained this part when we were at the, the top level concerning of, of forensic. The definition of phishing and cross-site scripting attacks. This is what we want to, we're going to demonstrate tonight through our proof of concept. So you see phishing. Phishing is a type of cyber attack in which attacker attempt to deceive information, I mean, uh, deceive individuals or organization into revealing sensitive information such as login credentials, credit card numbers, or other personal information. Cross-site scripting is a type of web application security vulnerability where attackers inject malicious scripts into web pages that are viewed by other users. So what we are going to do tonight is we're going to combine the both. Let's do for instance, phishing as a pretext. Are you talking to me? Okay. Phishing as a pretext for cross-site scripting attacks. Phishing can be used as a pretext to facilitate cross-site scripting attack by tricking users into unknowingly executing malicious script on vulnerable website or emails. So tonight, here comes our proof of concepts. Uh, I am now going to disregard this, uh, temporarily disregard the, uh, the PPT, then we'll go to our me environment. Are you seeing, are you seeing it? Yeah, we can still see the PPT. No, only the PPT, right? Okay, yeah. so that means I have to come back and uh and share again. Yeah, yeah, you share the back stuff. Yes, <clears throat> let me let me go back. Uh, yeah. So guys, still uh, come back and share. Uh, yeah. So uh, we are now going to the the proof of concept. So the proof of concept before the PPT. Okay, let me just go back to the PPT uh quickly and just give you a uh, explanation about the proof of concept. Oh. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, like you can see here, <clears throat> the proof of concept, this is what we are about to do. We are going to behave like a hacker right now, like the fellow with, with that red hat and the black hat with a the red script around it. The arrow will be red telling you that the hacker is into this system. This system is Kali Linux, right? But we are using this, this uh, software or we're using this this tool within Kali Linux is embedded within Kali Linux called Metax Plus 7 or Metax Plus. We're gonna do the configuration. We're gonna build application out of this and send it as an email. And that will be a phishing email. What do we want to produce from this Meta Exploit server? Uh, we're going to pr produce an exploit. We're going to produce what we call uh, is like a like a malware, piece of software or piece of code that we're going to embed within this email and send it to the user through this Internet uh, Explorer uh, on a window machine. If this person checks his or her email. We have what that we have what we call reflective injection. The the arrow, the red arrow you see with the two, I mean the two-headed arrow you see red, it means that this will have reverse connection. If the person clicks the link, 
the link going to send a signal to the server telling you that there's an activity ongoing on that particular uh, exploit. So we're going to write an instruction within the email for the person to follow the, the pop-out menu, like what hacker can do. Then after that, I'm going to show you how to prevent that. Okay, and this is the, the VMware, Oracle VMware, o Oracle Virtual Machine. So the, this IP, we're going to change this IP now because this was previously done the other time when we were teaching, when I was doing the presentation. This was not successful due to a uh, network issue. But today I will I will work on that. We're going to cancel this, uh, the other update. Uh, this update replace it with four. Okay, this will be four. One, nine, two, one, six, eight, five, six, four. Then this one will be five. This is the IP of the of the of the hacker machine. So this is the window machine that's going to be attacked by the hacker virtually. So uh, we're going to change the other of ten to five. Okay, one nine two that one six eight that five six that five. So now we can go back to work. We're going to the the main environment to display what we just explained. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna share the game. Let me share the uh, uh I am not finding my way through. Where? Okay, okay, so let me stop your sharing and then you can just share from Okay, okay, okay. I, I see Sorry. I seen it. Okay. okay. Are you are you seeing the Kali Linux uh, interface? No, no, your PPT is still okay. Now I can see it. Now it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, can, can you see the virtual machine here too? No, it's okay now. It's okay now. Okay, you see, you seen the window, the Kali Linux, and all of these. No, no, only the Kali HP in the show. Okay, but then let me, let me, let me, let me go by and do the right thing so all of them will show as one. Okay, you seen this one, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me look at that. Now. Okay, okay, like like here now, as you can see, uh, from from the demonstration, what uh, the the topology that I was explaining to you, the network topology, is this is how it is designed. You see, the this is Oracle uh, Virtual Box Management. I mean, manager. So I have previously configured this Oracle Virtual Box with a lot of machines. Okay, different different OS. This one is for Meta is Metasploctable. Uh, I even had a Windows Server uh, 2022, Ubuntu, uh, Windows 10, but we're going to use our focus here now, as you can see here running, is Kali Linux and, and Windows 7 Ultimate. So let's, let's launch the, uh, the Kali Linux. Are you seeing the Kali Linux there? Yes, yes, we can see it. We can see it. Okay. All right. So we we what we are gonna do now is we're gonna do the configuration now. Okay. So we are going to configure uh the as you can see the demonstration, what I was showing you that are what we're going to apply now. Okay, we 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 are going to develop the exploit, the malware, or the piece of code, the malicious code. We're going to produce. So now the first thing is the meta exploit you saw in the demonstration. Uh, to invoke that within this environment, we're going to say MSF console. We are going to the console of the meta exploit. Um, that's two. Uh, yeah, Mr. Really... Wayman, sorry. Can you put it back in full screen? We are still seeing the other operating systems, and the screen is small. Oh, I should do what? The Kali screen, can you just open it and put it in full screen? Okay. You guys still showing all of the the v VMware, the visual machine. They're showing all of them. So I need to cancel all of them and start, start it over, right? Uh, no, you can just uh, open the Kali screen, the main one. Because we can yeah, see okay. the command clearly that you're executing. Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me do that so the command can be uh, shown. Uh, so the command can be visible. Oh, okay. 
uh, are you seeing it now? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Okay. Okay, so now, as you can see, the command I used is, it was MSF console. If you look up there, you will see it right here, MSF console. Okay, I would like for everyone to, to be part of the part of this. So let me just uh, make it larger. Then we have the next one will be, we are going to, to uh, invoke the exploit. Where is our target? Our target is we winner. So we use say use use exploit use exploit. Then we have uh, Windows. What is our target? Our target is with Windows. So we we said okay. We type of Windows is that we M R S C M I S C. Then uh, we have STL, the STA, STA command we're going to use here is about, it's, it's a short form for, for HTML application. It's HTML application. So we just say HTML application server. That's the, that's the server we are building now. Okay, then you enter. Okay, now it's asking, no payload configure. So we are now about to configure payload and we are not going to use metaprator because we are not going to target our camera and other things. So because we're using HTA, HTML, since we are using email, we will, we will focus on the HTA, HTA server instead of the metaprator. So we're not going to use a metaprator, but we use a revert TCP to be able to, to have a re reflect, uh, reflective uh, injection attack. So we say set. We're going to set the environment now because the system is asking us to to produce a payload because there's no payload. The payload is the piece of uh, code that you're going to use to embed within within the email to cause havoc temporarily. This is just for teaching. Uh, we are not teaching people how to hack. But after this, we're going to show you how to stop this, right? So this is a disclaimer. I am not teaching you to go out there and be randomly hacking people's machine. No. Shell, as we were explaining about shell. Now understand, we are doing scripting now. Shell, so we use, because we, we were asked to use a metaprator, but we said we want to meet in the HTA, so we, re, we have already replaced that with the metaprator with HTA. So now we will meeting the reverse TCP. The protocol we were discussing today, you see how important it is. We are using one of the protocol, TCP, transmission control protocol, because we want for our information to be transmitted to that machine and also have a backdoor to give our information at the uh, reverse information or uh, uh, reverse shell at the base station. So we say now that we need to set the IP that this, this server will use to communicate with the remote server, the remote uh, system. So the IP that we changed over there today was, we say set the air host. The air host is the local host so we say 192.168.192.168.56.56 that we say four. This is the, the IP of this machine that we're going to use to, uh, to route through that machine. Then we enter. The next, our next target. Sorry for the injection, is, uh, honorable speaker. Yeah. Is yes. it possible for you to zoom in the writing area so that the code can be? Okay. Yeah. So it, okay, okay, okay. I don't know that. because I've seen it hanging up. That's why. Uh, you want it to be visible. Are you seeing yeah. it? Is it visible now? You can make it a little bit. Let me see. Is it okay now? Okay, let me see. I'm typing something. Are you seeing yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I can see why you are typing. You can make it bigger again. That will be that will be great. 
Oh, to make it bigger. Bigger, right? Yeah, yeah. So that the right thing. If somebody wants to maybe copy the code or follow what you are doing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You want, want to, to copy the code and whatever. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me enlarge it. Uh, it's possible. Oh, let me let me increase the size. Is it okay now? It should be much bigger now. Yeah, it's huh? okay. It's okay. It's okay. Let's... It's okay now, right? Yeah, it's okay. 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 So now, <clears throat> the next our next target is to come up with uh, the server port. The put we will use as one of the protocol to to jump to route through that that remote system. Which port we will just come up with a generic port as the server, the SRV is server short form server port, uh, P O R T server port. We can just put in a number maybe seven 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 seven. Okay, then we we enter. The next one will be uh, for us to set the, the local port. Now we have set the server port, but we need to set the local port. So the local port will be set airport. So set airport, we could say four, five, six, seven. Okay, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, four, five, six, seven, eight, five digit number. Then we can say, okay, now. So let's see how, uh, let's see the output. Uh, whether what we have done is, is uh, whether, whether it is shown within the system. So in order to view that, to display what we have done, you put show options, show options. Okay, are you seeing it on, a, on, your, on your side? Yes, yes. Okay, show options. So now we have shown the option, our net, our next uh, target now, is wrong. It's to run the exploit because we have gone through the process now. We need to run the exploit. So you say wrong. Because the code we're gonna produce here is the code we're gonna use to embed within the within the email. Okay. Are you seeing it on that side? Okay, we are successful using URL. So this URL, what you see here? So that's why you seeing it? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, the same server started. Mm -hmm. So the server started here now. This is what we're going to use. This is ATA. So I'm going to produce an email now and send an email. Uh, and we're going to come back here. Okay. I'm going to send Gmail. Are you are you seeing the email, sir? Yeah, I can see uh, your browser open. It, it open it, right? Yeah. Okay. The so um what well, this is asking me for password again yeah okay okay we are writing the email now we're going to write the email and embed what we have produced within our email so i'm going to show you the trick and i'll show you how to stop it okay whenever you have such encounter so you can be victimized in the process so my password uh, I hope it is huh? what okay I come in there This should be the person. Why? Okay. Okay. Cool. Honorable speaker, somebody says you please show the password. 
<laughs> uh, that that is that will be impossible. Now the password will be shown to you. This is just for demonstration. For the password, your own password, you can use it. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is doing two factors authentication as well. You see the, the phone there. I'm trying to verify the password from my phone before it opens. Are you seeing that from your end? Yes, yes, we can see it. We can see it. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, because of the time, uh, I will just come here because the other day we did similar things. So I will just copy what we did and we just move on with it. Uh, and embed it because of time, because we need to respect time. Okay, that compose. Now we just paste everything here. Uh, I'm going to cancel this, remove it, and produce new one. Who are the recipient? The recipient will be um, me. I uh, will send one to myself. Send another one as well. Let's see. Let me just send two. Then the subject will be uh what is what is this thing about okay i can't upgrade notification uh, uh you can say bank account upgrade notification And it can upgrade notification. So, then what we have done, I'm going back to copy what we have produced. Are you seeing it? I'm copying this. Are you seeing it from your end? Yes, yes, we can see it. We can see it. Okay, the URL, the URL that we produce from the the piece of code that we we I mean the piece of exploit we have developed. Okay, now we are going to come here. Uh, they say you have already received ninety percent of the maximum number of emails that can be sent to your inbox. If you don't want to risk losing email or having your account canceled, please raise your mailbox size to at least twelve uh, GB. In addition, more space must be available. To find out which choice is best for you. Click here. So this click here is the place we're going to we're going to put our exploit. Okay, we're going to make this one clickable. So you can observe what I'm about to do here. I'm using Google. Here, you say insert link. You click on the insert link. You just pull a link right here. All right when you pull a link there, then you just type click here. It will it will have it will affect the click here that you have uh, mentioned in your email. Click here. Now, now you see it has been clickable now. It's now clickable. This is how hacker can fool people. Now you see read. Then say click here. Then when you click here now, it will take you elsewhere. Say click here. Read the instructions and then make your selection. What we are doing here, this is how uh, the exploit that we have developed, this is how the application will behave. So the behavior of the application that what we are trying to, to mimic and, and play around uh, the, the user internet, okay? We, we, we are playing around their, 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 their level of thinking. You say, okay, select open. From the pop-up menu, if asked to do so, otherwise, the file will be automatically saved. A new window will pop up asking how the website will, will like to open a file on your computer by selecting allow extra <laughs> space can be added. All of these things are not real, right? We just put it in there 
to fool them so our exploit can work. So I'm now going to send an email. Uh, this is from, I just put generic name, funny name, Chattatan Sham, system administrator, uh, uh, Department of uh, Information Communication Technology, Bank of, uh, okay, TRT, Bank of Development and Productivity. TRT, International Bank of Development and Investment. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, so you put, put a, now you put a T, it, it'll, be, it'll be tidy, okay? TRT, International Bank of Development and Investment, okay? It's fake bank. You know, this bank is not in existence. Just, we're just doing this for demonstration purposes. And this, what we are, what we are showing you is not for you to, to, to hack another person. We're only showing you the idea for you to know that this is what happening on a daily basis around the world. Okay, email sent. So now I will prefer going to our virtual box to one of the systems we have previously configured, uh, the Windows system. Uh, where is it? Okay, the Windows system. Let me find the Windows system. Uh, this is the window system. Okay, are you seeing the window system there? Yes, 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 we can see it. Okay, okay, now we're going inside the window system because we were targeting the window from the beginning. So I think the email is already here. Let me see. It, 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 thirty two, it, thirty three. Okay, the email is here already. Okay, now this is the email that we sent. I sent one to myself. Uh, this is the bomb, the bombshell we have here. We are fooling the user. This is how the fishy email looks. You, they will always tell you, okay, after doing this, uh, this is what you should do. Please click here so that you will receive so and so amount. I'm not putting money, but for me, I just from IT background, I just trying to tell you that this is for uh, bank that come upgrade. Maybe just say for instance, maybe you were. Uh, assistant administrator working at one of the, the biggest bank in the world, right? And uh, uh, one of the hackers within the system or somewhere, sitting somewhere trying to, to mimic the behavior of, uh, of your system and sending such email to one of your employees. Because if some of those banking institutions have money, so they pay for a lot of uh, services, they have servers are hosted around the world in the cloud. And because of that, it's kind of difficult to, to hack them. So what hacker does most of the time, send the email to some of the employees within the system that are not tech savvy, right? They don't, they, 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 are, they are not, they are not a skill. They are not computer literate. They just say it that way, right? They only, they only specialize in clicking, clicking, clicking. Whatever somebody says on, on the internet or on social media, they just click. So now let's continue. We're going to click. Our exploit is there. The instruction given is about to be implemented. You seeing there? Are you seeing this? <clears throat> yes, yes, I can see it. I can see it. Okay, this is the exploit. What we bear behind the, the email is this. They say, what do you want to do with this? The system is asking us. Today, we say that when it's asked you, just click open. We have already clicked open so the file won't be saved automatically. Because we did this before, we have already written the email, covering all of these things. So the person want to be, you know, so professional by following the instruction from the, from the, uh, the system administration, uh, the, the system administrator of the, of the banking institution that they are working. They want to follow instruction. So when you click here, Right, okay. And we also say that when you have been giving after clicking, when you are clicking open, the website want, uh, wants to, to, to open web content using this program on your computer. We say in the email that you should click allow. So let's see, let's see the behavior first. Let's go back to the exploit today. Are you both seeing the, the Kali Linux uh, environment, the server? 
Are you seeing it? I just yes, want to yes, show yes, something. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, the, the first time after producing an exploit, we had several started. There was nothing here telling you about delivering uh delivering payload. So the payload we produce now because we have click one aspect of the of the exploit, there's a reverse connection now to the server. This hacker is not in the scene uh, location. Maybe this person is sitting far in another uh, country doing this thing. You just send email and somebody is just sitting somewhere, just clicking, clicking. They're going to tell you about winning Lotto or winning big money. They're telling you click here. Then you just click in. Okay, I will show you how to stop that. Okay, now, because of the first clicking I did, there's what we call reflective injection. The reason why you saw that red arrow, the two-headed arrow over there was reverse connection. Anything you do over there, there will be reflection of that from the hacker side or on the hacker side. So the STS server now is delivering the payload. So we, we are going back to that to end the clicking. We come back to the window environment. Are you seeing the window environment? Yes, yes, wanna... yes. Okay. Then now you just click, click allow. Now we have we 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 have bomb. <laughs> we already sent the bomb. I want to show you what we have done. Now there's no there's no reaction. You're not seeing anything happening here. The person would not know that they have caused serious harm to their entire institution. The credibility of that institution is at stake right now. So let's go to the, to the hacker side and see what that person has done prematurely because they don't know what they were doing. You see here now, they're saying, sending a cold stage and giving me the, um, the window server, I mean, uh, the window machine is x86. And everything is shown here and the IP. This this IP you see here, this is sending a caller stage uh, to 192.168.565. That is the window machine that we were opening that particular exploit. Now we are going to go to the section to intrude into that person's machine from the the, the 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 problem they have caused for themselves. Let's say, for instance, if that person was one of the administrators within the IT division, clicking, or maybe you are at the data center and you click in such link, the end of the day, I'm going to show you, I'm going to take over, or the hacker is going to take over the entire network. Yes, yeah, so we're going to type, we're going to just press enter in this area. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we want to know the section. Has it established any section? Yes, one section because the interaction was just one. If we were sending it to a multitude of people or all around the world, anytime they click, there will be another section established here. But only one, one activity. So because of that, the reverse connection is one section. So that's what you see in the, the section here. So we're going to click now. Click. It has created the environment for us to carry on harm to the system. One, we're going to press, uh, let's say, sections. We want to see how many sections have been created. Sections, okay, is showing us. You see in the section right now, it's an ID one. We had a name, the type, the name, it's, it's a shell that we established is x86 Windows. So we, if this was server, the, the spec of that server is going to be indicated here, but we're just using a window machine. That's why. But if the person was making a mistake or maybe uh, directly on that particular network or at, the, at any data center or within a banking institution or security organization, then it means that we have taken over that entire network. We can sit here and do whatever we want to do with that system. We can open camera, we can we, we can infiltrate this, the, the conversation between them. 
we we can uh, the hacker can hijack not me can hijack the uh, the the information leading from one location to the another within you know, various departments at that institution. So you can see, okay, now you can see here one five or uh, one nine two that one six eight that five six that four is the host machine, the machine that that establish the connection for the hacker is this. With this, if you can remember, with this 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 uh this was the host IP, uh the the port that we we created, the local port. This is the local port that is routing through. To that particular network, so it's routing routing it through this IP. That's the reason why I was telling you about protocol. Protocol is very important. So it follows the protocol from this IP to this IP through the through the uh, the transmission control protocol, the the TCP IP. Okay, now the one that two that one six eight that five six that five is the window machine that we have taken over. Okay, and the, the port for that machine is 50062. And the IP of that machine is 192.168.5.6.5. So now let's get into the machine. Let's, let's remain within the colleague environment and infiltrate or penetrate through the DOS environment there. We have to go to the command line of that window machine that we are taking over. But you know what we are doing right now. I don't care how many uh, protection software you have, uh, whether Windows Defender or whatever antivirus you are spending your money on. The thing is like a drilling, right? You have all of the security. What if uh, the the uh, the criminal drill through your house? So what we are doing now is like a drilling. You have all the security outside there. They don't know what happening within the house. But we are draining from outside, entering the house. So the security software will not work because they don't know what happening from beneath. I mean, underneath the the uh, the system. So let's say for instance, we say sections. We already have the sections. We we type the section again. We say section uh, dot i. So we're going to to initiate this. This section by number one, the initial number we're going to use is one. They will say enter. Boom. Now you see the window environment. We are not here again. Now what we are doing is we are pivoting. We call that pivoting. We 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 are leaving this environment and jumping from one end to another in the, in the network. If if this was if they have a how you call this uh active directory or whatever group that they have established within a system. If this was a system that we have taken over, we're going to be pivoting when we go into this other side or this other department and what we are looking for is not there. We're going to jump to another department through the network uh, interfaces. So now we are we are at a C drive. Even though we are, we are within Kali Linux, but now we jump into the C drive of that particular machine. We are inside the window, that person machine now, right? So let's say for instance, you want to know the IP address. Uh, let's say IP config uh, uh, of that machine. Now I give you this, and this cannot ordinarily work when you are within, uh, when you are within Kali Linux, within Linux environment. So we can say DR, let's say the, let's look at the directories, the virtual directories of the machine. So what we are doing right now is we have we are infiltrated, we have penetrated the system already. So we're looking at all of what's going on within the system. We, we, we're just uh, issuing command, seeing everything that is within that particular system at the back end. Then we can copy anything we want to copy here and, and move on with whatever. Let's say, for instance, if uh, maybe I look at, uh, let, let's, let's, let's look at the desktop, for example. Uh, there are a lot of uh, programs here. I just said DR and I got all of what those programs that are running on the machine. So you can look at some of the machines, I mean, some of the programs that are running on the machine and stop it. If you see any security software that working, that will bother you if you want to jump into the to the, the GUI or the uh, the, the graphic 
a user interface and you will, will be bottled. You know, a lot of people they don't understand in the war right now. You huh? I'm either somebody I'm... just spoke. No, no, just uh, that person was saying something. Okay, okay, now, uh, instead of just issuing command and what have you, we have already accomplished our aim. So let's go to the to the um to the prevention side. If you I one of those, are you seeing the um the window? No, I mean, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, no, no. okay. You seen you seen the uh the Gmail. This is the place we established this email today. If you don't want to be, if you don't want to be a uh, one of the victims, point. If somebody telling you to click somewhere, point at this. When you point, this is not fully qualified domain. This domain will not pay for, right? If you point at this, just look at the bottom, at the bottom left. You will see the IP address and the uh, the the exploit that will produce. It will be shown. Let me just click on this so you will see what I'm talking about. It can be shown. Oh. Oh, everything disappeared. Okay. This, if you point at this, you will see it here. So that we are going back to our our PPT. So thank you very much. That's a demonstration of uh I mean proof of concept of what I was explaining to you. You have seen what hackers are doing around the world every day. If you were one of those, I know some of you have been you will have an encounter with such uh, issue in the past. This time around, I'm going to show you what to do in order to be protected. Okay. So we're going. Are you seeing the PPT? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Prevention strategies for phishing attacks. Now we have. We have gone through the proof of concept. Now, if you see such email coming to your email box, verify the sender. If you know where the email is coming from, if you are working within an institution, maybe a banking institution or working for the government or wherever, whether in a private institution or wherever you're working, you should know the email address because they have organizational email for every organization for that matter. If you have been giving an email address bearing the name of that organization, make sure to verify that in line with what, what the uh, maybe IT division or webmaster are giving you. You should verify or you can even call them, take a phone and call them and ask them, whether uh, that particular email address of that child is what they have, they, I mean, they have produced for that period of time. You say, keep your software updated. Some people just feel complacent. The world we live in today is evolving. Don't feel, don't, don't be afraid and don't act lazy. You have to update your system all of the time. If you don't know about it, Ask people who know about computer. If you are using certain laptops, you're getting slow, 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 and what have you. You don't know what's happening. Sometimes the malware, you see the malware that one of those that we just produce, it's very easy. It just requires your, your skill, that's all. Just common thing we did. And what we did was common in, 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 uh, in crafting. But the end result, is 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 very dangerous. If we were sending that to a network, I want to sit. A hacker can just sit elsewhere in the world and control entire nation. Okay, be cautious with personal information. If you have certain information, as we read from the beginning, always have in mind about confidentiality, integrity, and availability know who to give certain information to at certain point in time. You should know who to make certain information available to at a certain point in time. Because if you, the, the issue about availability is you go with integrity. 
if you prematurely give information outside without verification, the end result can be bad. That what you see some people on social media today, they don't know what to be, what to post within a group. And the end result, when they see such thing, when people start using your own information the other way around, then you start thinking you want to commit suicide. So know what to be posted on social media. Not every information for this for, for social media. Don't click on suspicious link, like what I was, one of the things I was showing you. Don't look at link, you know that this, this link, even though they are telling me about one million dollars to be given to me in no time, the money that I didn't work for, or you did not work for, because some people just want to take shortcut in life. Who don't who do want money? Somebody just call you or send you an email telling you, you if you do this, you have a five million dollars. Uh, most of most of the fishing email will always talk about this. They, they will talk about war two country. Oh, I was in this. Uh, uh, my parent was like this. We were having this other property. Then all of a sudden, my my my, my father or my mother died. The result of the war and all of the property in my care and blah blah blah. I want to. I, I'm looking for somebody elsewhere in a safe zone to take uh, uh, ownership of, of the property so we can sh we can have a share and all of that. Then they tell you, it is not free. They want to tell you to click somewhere. And there where the problem is. All of that good information they are providing, they will always tell you to click somewhere. And that clicking aspect is, is what's going to put you in problem. Okay, they say use multi-factor authentication. Then if you can remember when I was putting my email, uh, I mean, when I put my email address and register my password, you saw the phone, the telephone information showing. That's the two-factor authentication. Now it's, it can be multi-factors. You can use other devices to do that. Now they, they were asking me whether that particular email or password I put was for me. So in order to show that level of integrity or confidentiality is to get to my personal telephone. So they send an the email to my telephone with, with the information that XYZ person is trying to, to log into your account. Do you, I mean, are you in favor of this person or, or whatever, or are you aware of this uh, interaction? Then I click yes, and my email address open. That's the two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication to have another means of verifying that information. Uh -huh. So lastly, for conclusion, we have this chain of attack that we just experienced, right? Allow cyber criminals to execute on authorized code with inviting browsers, potentially leading to data theft, account takeover, I already explained that to you, or other malicious actions. To combat this threat, organization must prioritize user education that's number one. Implement robust security practices. Don't be complacent with one, one, one level of security. Conduct regular security audits and stay vigilant against both phishing attacks or phishing attempts and XS vulnerability. That XX is cross-site scripting vulnerabilities to safeguard their sensitive information and protect their users from falling victim to these combined attack vectors. So now, thank you very much. And that ends our presentation for this uh, for today. Uh, I will now give the floor to uh, the, the moderator for anyone who has question to ask. If you have any question, uh, I will be willing to share my idea with you so as to help you clear your doubt. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please send an emoji. Thank you message. Whatever message you have, appreciating our speaker for today. Uh, just send that message, guys. Appreciate our speaker for today. Thank you so much, Mr. Wemi. Okay, the PPC, they, they, okay, in addition to that, somebody is asking for the PPT. Everything will be given to the organizer they're going to share the ppt with you and everything uh, any other information will also be factored through 
uh, the PPT and will be given to the to the um, to the uh, to the organizer of this of the program for on onward submission to all of you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. So the recordings and everything for today, we are going to work on it right after this program. Updates will be coming up in all of the groups. So if you are not in any of the group, uh, let me. Let me share my screen, then uh, put up the, the link for, so we are at the end of today. Uh, you can start to put on your cameras so that we can take the attendance or selfie for today. If you have any question for the speaker, uh, I've not seen any question from uh, Tencent. We want to see your faces. I don't see any question from Tencent. Let me see if there's any question for Zoom. If there is any, then I will go for that question. You want to see your beautiful faces. So I think they all understood what you presented on today. So there's no question. Okay, okay. Uh, is somebody I, do, I, I get one question. What's the but question? We are not allowed to, to put uh, the camera on. I don't know why. Okay, let me let me do yeah. that. Let me allow you guys yeah, okay. Go ahead. See, what yeah. are you doing again? I ask a question. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. uh, honorable speaker, thank you first day for your well composed and knowledgeable presentation. Like I wanted to ask, right? I'm trying to dive in another few. So mm -hmm. I deeply wanted to understand the differences between information security and cyber security. Okay, <laughs> uh, okay. Like what you see to me in that field, right? Cyber security is a broad topic, right? It covers all areas of security. So taking information security is also another segment of cyber security. So you are not wrong. So the, the different there is cyber security. I think you saw what I was showing you, right? The roadmap is so huge. So you can branch to another place that information security, because your side, the the mostly the information side of, 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 of cyber security, you will not be at the at the um, the core of cyber security like uh foxing, uh fox texting and penetration testing, because the fox texting aspect is where you're going beyond like learning like assembly language, C programming languages and all of that to be able to have an interaction with the uh, with the operating system, right? Or building a security application. But for the information side, it's good. You can work with forensic investigators. You can, you can, you can help secure a uh, lot of environment or, uh, uh, critical infrastructure, but your job mainly will be about the uh, the application side that have to do with uh, information. But you are not going to be at the at the core. When you say that way, it's like uh, uh, like when I was learning to, uh, computer science from the beginning, the only thing I used to hear was software and hardware. I didn't know that the roadmap was so long. <laughs> I didn't know until when I got into computer science. So it's the same thing. It's the same branch of cyber security. So I hope I answer your question. Okay, okay. The same branch of cyber security, but one is going to be the core. Now I'm going to be a spectator. <laughs> so guys, I have a please, question. Please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, please, because of the, the sake of time, right? If you have any question, just send it to me. I will. Yeah, I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, just send a question to me through WeChat or through the WhatsApp group, and I will send it to the speaker because of time. I want to for us to end on time today. So let me just take the attendance press. After the official one, you can stay. I think the speaker will still be around. You can ask a question, but let's officially. Uh, Call your day. Sorry if that uh, is not what you really want.
So guys, please, the information, attendance and everything will be shared in the WhatsApp and the WeChat group. This is the QR code for the WhatsApp group. Try to scan it and join the WhatsApp group. This is the one for the WeChat. All those that have added me, I've already added you in the WeChat group. So you will get the attendance and every other PPT and everything will be shared in the WeChat and WhatsApp group. So if you are not there, please try to join. Uh, now it's time for attendance and the end of today. So you can turn on your cameras, let's say the, the attendance. Hope you are using your real name because we will use that name to verify if truly you attended out of the days. So please, if you are using maybe Galaxy or iPhone, please make sure you change. I think Galaxy X8 Plus. There's someone using Galaxy S8 Plus. I'm a only name. Uh, let's try to send in your real name in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to attend at least the five days. There will be no There will be no group session. So all you have to do is to attend all of the five days. And then your certificate will be ready at the five. The five, the certificate will be ready. I think I'll show you how it is. How is this like so if you still want to know about the certificate, you get more information on that. So just turn on your camera, let's do it. In, we're going to take the fresh screen. Well, I'm 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 doing it, guys. I'm doing it. Don't worry. I'm doing it. Okay, guys, the attendance, the attendance is over for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining. You. See you tomorrow, same time. I like it. See. I'm here, 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 I'm here,